Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Multiplying rational expressions is a lot like working with exponents. There's a few key exponent rules we're going to be working with, um, and the first one is going to be x to the n on top of x to the m is equal to the difference of those exponents. And the next one to think about is x to the n times x to the m, and that's equal to the sum of those exponents. What we're going to be doing is working with simplifying the integers and simplifying the variables separately. That's the tip or the strategy we'll go with here. Okay, so what I want to do in problem number one is look at the integers first and then the exponents next. And you have a choice. You could simplify each fraction first or you can multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom and reduce later. It's totally up to you. What I'm going to do is multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then simplify. So looking at the integers, 3 times 15 is 45. And on top, I have x to the 4th and y to the 5th. On the bottom, I have the product of 5 times 12, and then I have x to the 6th y. And notice how I wrote it, integer, x's, not, or y's. I wrote them uh, in the same order on top and bottom, because that will help me reduce. Okay, 45 and 60. The common factor there is 15, so I'll have 3 over 4 for my integers. Then looking at my x's, on top I have x to the 4th, on bottom I have x to the 6th. That's going to give me 2 x's in the bottom. And then for the y's, I have 5 on top and 1 on the bottom, so that's going to be y to the 5 minus 1, which is y to the 4th. There we go. Let's try another one. Again, um, I personally like to multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and reduce in problems like this where the numbers aren't too big. We'll see in example 3 some bigger numbers, Well, we'll try a different strategy. Okay, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then writing them in uh, x's first and then y's second order. Okay, so what I need to do is reduce 15 over 120, which is 1 over 8 for my integers. Then for the x's, I have 5 on top and 8 on the bottom. In the y's, I have 3 on top and 9 on the bottom. Okay, here's the final answer. I'm going to show you a common student mistake. Sometimes when students go through and they cross stuff out, they'll end up with 8x to the third y to the sixth, which is kind of right, except for that that 8x to the third y to the sixth needs to be in the bottom of a fraction. See how all the biggest exponents and my biggest integers on the bottom? That's a way to help me remember that that stuff needs to be in the denominator. Okay, last but not least, number three. Okay, so I sure could use that same strategy, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and reduce, but I'm going to end up with some bigger numbers. So what I want to do instead is reduce each fraction separately. The first one, I notice 25 over 18 don't have any common factors, so I'll leave that as 25 over 18. But for the x's here, I have x squared on top of x. And then for the y's, I have y to the third on top of y to the sixth. Okay, there's my first fraction simplified. Still going to be multiplied by something. Here comes my second fraction. 6 can't reduce. x to the 4th stays in the top. But then for the y's, I'll have y to the 4th in the bottom. So it's not a huge, uh, huge simplification, but it's something. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how you can reduce across fractions. It's okay that this 6 and that 18 are in different fractions. As long as one's on the top, one's on the bottom, I could simplify that to 1 over 3. So looking at my integers now, I have 25 on top. That didn't get simplified at all, but now I just have 3 on the bottom. On top left for the x's, I have 1x plus 4 more. I'm going to add those exponents to give me x to the 5th. And on the bottom, I have 3 y's, 4 more y's, so that's y to the 7th. Okay, so simplifying and multiplying rationals is a lot like what you do with fractions. My suggestion is that you do the integers, then the variables separately. And then uh, remember your exponent rules, like how we talked up here about how those guys subtract and those guys add. Those are some other common student mistakes. Uh, before I leave you, sometimes problems ask you about domain restrictions. Those means numbers that x and y cannot be. And for both of these, you'll see that y could not be to 0 and x could not be equal to 0. Because if x were 0 or if y were 0 in all of these problems, you would be dividing by 0. And that's something that's undefined in math. So if you're asked for domain restrictions on problems like this, I would have that neither x nor y could be equal to 0. And by 2. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? 
All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 